So, hi, um, my name is Rui Uyama. I, I am a software engineer working at Google. And um, today I'm going to give you a uh, talk about the uh, LLVM linker or LLD. Um, so, you may be wondering uh, what's going on in the uh, project uh, recently because there seems to be a lot of going on there. So, um, my talk will include, um, my talk uh, will cover that. So, my talk will uh, include a brief history of the project, uh, status of the uh, project, and some performance numbers that we achieved so far with the linker, and the future plan of the linker. Uh, so uh, here is a uh, brief history of the linker. So LLD has a fairly long history. Uh, so the first commit to the project was made in the um, 2011, which is five years ago. So I started working on the project in 2013. And since then, um, I have been working on that project, um, mainly working on COF and ELF, which is for Windows and for Unix. Um, and may, my main goal was to provide a um, high performance open source linker for Windows operating system. So, and after I spent a fair amount of time on the project, um, I realized that the, there is some room to improve it significantly uh, by redesigning it. So um, I started rewriting the uh, Coff linker in May 2015, and then I got an uh, immediate success. So the linker could self-host the linker itself uh, from the uh, first commit. And in a few months, it became to be able to link up extremely large programs such as Chrome uh, browser. And the performance was better than I, I expected. So it, it's, uh, it was two times faster than the uh, linker that comes as a part of MSVC uh, tool chain. So, um, so we started putting the uh, Coff linker to ELF in July of the last year. So the new linker is so um, so the new linker is less than one year old. Uh, it is still uh, under active development, and it's pretty uh, much pre-alpha status. But we believe that that's that's going to be a nice, good one. So. Um, so the ELF linker is intended to be the uh, drop-in replacement for the uh, GNU linker. So there are two linkers in GNU being utilized, as you know. So there are so-called BFD linker and the uh, gold linker, uh, which is new. Uh, both basically support the same command line interface. And the LED supports the same command line inter uh, interface as well. So I said that this is pre-alpha status, but it's already able to link a lot of programs. So you can build uh, most of the FreeBSD user land with LLD. Um, you can, of course, build the entire LVM tool chain with the, uh, including LLD itself with LLD. Uh, so our main focus is currently on 64-bit version of x86, but it has preliminary support of various platforms, such as PowerPC, ARM64, and MIPS. So the, uh, I think the largest of missing piece is probably the um, comprehensive linker script support, which is needed to link some programs such as Unix kernels. Um, but we, are, we have a plan to work on it. So um, what's, the, what's the goal of the new linker? Um, I think there are three main goals I said when I started uh, rewriting the linker. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Um, yeah, it, it was too large. But. Okay. Um, so, um, so I, I think there were three goals I, I set when I, when I started to write, rewriting the linker. So first and the most important goal is speed. 
So for most developers, a linker is just a black box that combines all object files into one executable or a shared object file. And what matters most is just a, just a time to do it. So we want to do that better than any other linker so that LLD uh, becomes the uh, standard linker for daily development on Unix systems. Um, second goal is simplicity. Um, as I'll describe in this talk, um, what, that, what the linker does is not that complicated. So I want to reflect that fact to code. Also, simple code tends to be faster. The third goal is extensibility. So the current ELF linker is only about 10,000 uh, lines of code, including comments. And it already supports most ELF func uh, functionalities and many platforms and some advanced features, such as uh, garbage collection, section garbage collection, or identical code forwarding. So I want to make it extensible through uh, simplicity. The code is very simple and, uh, in my opinion, very uh, clean. So um, speed is the most important feature of the linker. So here is the uh, graph to um, link, compare LLD with, um, with BFD and gold linkers. The shortest bar, uh, which is the leftmost one, is the uh, result of CP command. So the CP command copies the result file to other file to see how many milliseconds are needed to read and write the data. That is the same as the uh, result in terms of size of my SSD drive. So you can think of uh, CP. CP can be thought as the lowest bound. So you cannot make a linker that's faster than CP. So the programs we used for this benchmark are medium-sized ones. They are about 30 megabyte or to 60 megabyte. And the link time is a few hundred milliseconds to a few seconds. So as you can see, uh, the BFD linker is slow. And that's why gold was created for. And the LOD is one, two, three times faster than gold in our test cases. And sometimes it's only 3.5 times slower than CP. So I think that's a very good result. So however, linking small programs are not really um, that important because it's fast anyways. So here's a comparison to link a very large executable. Uh, in this test, I used the Chrome browser with debug info enabled uh, because it's huge. It's almost two gigabytes in size. So Gold links it in about 40 seconds when multi-threading is enabled and the code size optimization, which is um, identical code folding, is disabled. So under the same condition, uh, LLD links it in 40.4 seconds. That is only 3.5 times slower than CP again. And that is, that is more than two times faster than gold. So it's faster in small, for small programs and large programs. Uh, so you may be wondering um, why LLD is slow if you enable code size optimization. Uh, it's simply because um, we just created the feature and we haven't optimized, optimized that code path yet. So I didn't include the result of the BFD linker in this graph because it's it's too, the bar would be too high. So BFD linker took 311 seconds to link Chrome executable. So um, how did we achieve this, these numbers? Um, I think there are key uh, few decisions that I made to create a high performance linker. Uh, so first, uh, our archive file handling is more efficient than the uh, traditional Unix linker semantics. So I, I will describe that in the next slide. Uh, second, so we carefully um, designed the linker so that it doesn't uh, read any data ahead of time. So sometimes data read from disks are just discarded if that's not needed for linking. So not reading, avoiding, avoid re reading such data reduces the amount of work the linker has to do, which saves time. So last three, um, if we have to do some costly operation, then we do it only once. So we obtain a handle 
uh, on the uh, first operation and use it throughout the process to avoid uh, repeating the costly operation. I'll talk about that later. So um, I'll describe the uh, different file archive handling of the LLD. So, but as a recap, I, I think it's good to describe how the traditional linker handle files, object files, and archive files. Um, so this is a figure of very primitive linker. It handles only object files. So in the uh, most primitive form, the linker is just a cat program that concatenates object files into one executable. Then the linker has to fix, his, uh, fix addresses referring external symbols for each object files in the uh, concatenated, ex concatenated executable so that the executable is actually runnable. So this understanding is, I think, very important. So the linker is in most fundamental form it's just a cat program with code to fix up inter compilation unit references. But however, um, cat-like command is too hard to use because you have to manually maintain the list of object files you wanna link. So when you add an undefined symbol to printf, for example, then if the linker is just a cat program, then you would have to add printf.all to your command line, or that, that's too painful. So the uh, static archive was invented. So archive files con is, contains object files and their own sy um, symbol tables. Um, so if you give an archive file to the linker, then the linker extracts only object files that's a need, that are needed to complete the linking. So you, you no longer have to maintain each file uh, manually in the command line. So uh, the traditional linker works this way. Um, it reads object files and archive files as they appear in the command line until all symbols are resolved. So if, it is an so if the file is an object file, then the linker links it. And if, it is an, uh, if the linker is reading an archive file, then the linker extracts object files that have definitions for undefined symbols and link them. So it sounds like a simple rule, but it sometimes led to a counterintuitive behavior. So um, I'll describe that using this figure. So the crowd thing, is a set of undefined symbols at each moment. So after the linker links object X in this picture, there are two undefined symbols left, A and B. So they need to be resolved by some remaining files, which is either object Y or library X or library Y, or otherwise the link eventually fails. So um, linker visits the next file, and this is, a, this is a picture of that situation. So object Y had a definition for A. So it, A is removed from the set. However, uh, object B adds a new undefined symbols to the set because it, it happened to have the uh, undefined definition for B. Uh, so the set is updated accordingly. So now the uh, linker visits an, object, uh, an archive file. So the linker extracts all object files that have definitions for undefined symbols in the set. So in this figure, all undefined symbols previously existed has been resolved. But in order to resolve uh, symbols, you have to extract some object uh, from archives. So which means that it may add a new undefined symbols to the set. So in this picture, a new symbol is added to the set. And finally, um, in this case, all symbols are resolved by GR library Y, and a new undefined symbols are added. So at this point, the linker is down because the set becomes empty. 
so the linker, then, then the name resolution phase is done. So the linker concatenates all the object files that is given via the command line and extracted from the archive files and uh, fixes up inter object uh, re references and writes the result to the disk. So um, here is the problem of the uh, traditional Unix linkers um, semantics. Um, so the traditional linkers semantics cannot handle mutu uh, mutually dependent archive files beautifully. So in this case, we have an undefined symbol left uh, in the set at the end of the link linking process. And even if the symbol F existed in the library Y, it cannot read that of uh, archive file because it has already visited. And at that time, F didn't exist, so no, no files were extracted for that. And after it uh, passed over the file, it's too late to revisit the file because it's completely sequential process. So, but obviously this is a problem, so there are a few solutions against it. So, uh, how would you deal with that? So, one obvious solution is to pass the same file to the command line again and again, so that linker visits the same file again and again. So, it works in some case, some sense, but it's awkward. And it could actually fail because there is a possibility that the second visit to library X in this case happened to extract an object file that has an undefined symbol that can be resolved using the library Y. So you have to repeat the same set of archives again and again but you actually don't know how many times you have to repeat that. So this is, this, this some sort of works, but it actually doesn't work. So the, so the special options are invented. So the other uh, option, the, so the linker accepts hyphen hyphen start group and hyphen hyphen end group and Basically, uh, these options let the uh, linker to loop over the uh, files between the options until no new symbols are added to the set. So this is a very useful feature. Um, however, that means the linker needs to visit the files between the options at least twice. So on the first iteration, it resolves all symbols using the archive files. And on the second iteration, it reaches the convergence. So that's, that's better than the previous uh, approach because it's guaranteed to uh, succeed as long as all undefined symbols can be resolved uh, using the archive files between the options, but it's still awkward and inefficient. So uh, here's uh, how LD deals with the problem. So fundamental problem of the approach is that the semantics is is sequential file visit. That's the problem. So, but do we have to do that? So I, I think we don't actually have to do that. So there, there must be some better approach. So what, so we do not visit the files sequentially in LLD anymore. So instead it extracts object files as soon as um, we notice that the files are needed. So it's a different approach from, it's a departure from the traditional Unix linker. So let me describe the algorithm using the, uh, this picture. So after we read the obj object, object X, the symbol table contains um, A and B. So A is a defined symbol and B is undefined symbol. Um, object Y has a definition for B but it also has uh, two undefined symbols, C and D. So we are about to resolve C and D using some files in library X and library Y. So Linker extracted some object files that have the definition for undefined symbols. So 
it also as the as the uh, special type of symbols, Reji symbols. So Reji symbols are symbols created from archive files symbol table, uh, and that indicates that these symbols can be resolved if you need them by extract extracting some file from the archive files, but th that haven't happened yet. So it is some sort of proxy object for defining the symbol. So um, some file is extracted from libby, library y in this picture. So that file has an undefined symbol to G, then the linker goes back to library y and lets that lazy symbol to trigger the uh, uh, let the lazy symbol to load the actual definition for that symbol. So, as you can see, this is not a sequential file visit. So, when the linker uh, reads all files, the link is done. So, if all symbols in the symbol table are either defined or lazy, then the link succeeded. If there is a remaining undefined symbols, then the link fails. So, this is apparently the uh, departure from the traditional Unix linker semantics on the uh, archive file handling. So it could technically result in extracting different object files from archive. So however, we are not too worried about the possible incompatibility because we have successfully linked many, a lot of programs with LOD, such as most part of free, free BSD based system. So I think that's a good trade off. So, um, large programs are really large. So, uh, I'll talk about that using the Chrome as a Chrome with debug info as an example. So, here, here are some numbers. So, in order to Chrome uh, with debug info, um, which is almost about uh, two gigabyte, the linker has to handle millions of objects. So, developers are waiting while it's linking, so it must be freezing fast. So LOD can link the two gigabyte file in 40.4 seconds, as, as I said. So because copying data takes 4.4 seconds, we have only 10 seconds left to handle the uh, two gigabyte file. So let's say we spend 100 nanoseconds for each relocation. Then in total, we are gonna spend uh, 1.3 seconds because 100 nanoseconds times 30 million is 1.3 seconds. So every group counts uh, in the tight loop in the linker. So we need a good data structure for symbols and relocations for efficiency. So I, I'll describe the uh, symbol data structure in LD uh, because it's the key of the efficient symbol handling. So symbol table is basically uh, a hash table from symbol table to symbol data. The total number of symbols in Chrome with debug Debug info is 6.6 .6 billion, and its total size is 450 megabyte, which is huge. So inserting that many strings into the hash table only takes uh, 1.5 seconds. So we don't really want to do that. We, we don't really want to look up hash table too frequently. So we actually look up the hash table only once for each new symbol read from disk. So we split the symbol into two uh, pieces of information. One is the uh, symbol, which is essentially the pointer uh, to the actual symbol data. You can think this as a handle. We call the uh, actual symbol data object as a symbol body. So symbol bodies are created for independently for each object file. So there is only one symbol for each symbol name, but there can be many symbol bodies for each symbol. So when we see two symbols with the same name, then we have to resolve them. So in our linker, this is done with a single pointer mutation, which is very fast. Uh, so in this picture, we have an un undefined uh, reference to printf, which is currently pointing to the undefined symbol, undefined symbol body. So linker reads some definition uh, from the disk for printf. So all symbols from the object files are added to the symbol table. So if the symbol is new, the, a new symbol is created. Otherwise, uh, we may update the pointer of the existing symbol. So what we do in this case is to uh, change the pointer for printf so that it uh, points to the better one, in this case, defined one, because defined one is always better than undefined symbol. 
So if the same strong symbol is added to the linker, uh, added to the symbol table, then it, it is an error. So this is the case when we have two conflicting symbols. So symbol preference is basically in a, essentially in a binary relation over the symbol. So if the uh, two symbols have the same uh, priority, then it's a conflicting symbol. So, um, this is, uh, this, so in this figure, uh, this is where object files in archive files are extracted. So in this picture, uh, we have the lazy symbol for printf, which means that we know that there is an archive file that contains the definition for printf, but we haven't read that object file yet. So lazy symbols know that uh, what files they are created from and how to extract files to turn them into <coughs> defined symbols. So using that information, when we found an undefined symbol uh, to printf, in the, uh, we can let the lazy symbol to load the object file. As a result, we get something like in this picture. So we, we load the uh, definition for printf, and the symbol, uh, because the lazy symbol is less preferred than the uh, defined symbol, uh, when the uh, defined symbol for printf is added, the symbol is updated like in this figure. So in order to apply relocations, uh, we, we need to get a symbol resolution result. So for example, in order to fill the uh, offset to printf, then we need to know the, uh, what symbol printf is resolved to. So we could have done by looking up the symbol table by name, but as I said, we don't want to do that because it's slow. There, there can be tens of millions of relocations and the hash table lookup is too slow for us. So every clock counts when you are handling relocations. So our data structures works really well in this situation. So each symbol body has a pointer to each symbol. So that means starting from any symbol body, we can go back to each symbol and then go to each symbol body to get the resolution result. So if every symbol has been resolved successfully, then starting from any undefined symbol, you can reach the, uh, the uh, definition for that symbol. So it is just a two pointer differences. So this is very, very efficient. So this symbol table structure is not only efficient, but it's also flexible. So it is easy to implement a complex feature uh, with it. So here is an example. So there is, there is a linker feature that to define a wrapper function for wrapper function. This option is uh, used frequently to replace some standard function. For example, you can define underscore underscore wrap underscore malloc by yourself and pass wrap equal malloc to option to the linker so that all calls to malloc is forwarded to your malloc function. Yeah. Then real malloc function is defined as an alias to the original malloc so that you can call that uh, real malloc function from your wrapper. So it may seem a bit, little bit complicated, but it's actually not that complicated because this can be done with a few pointer mutations. So we first uh, resolve all symbols normally without considering the option, and then we swap the pointer according to the uh, option so that the final figure is like that. So all, for, all calls uh, to who in this case, is forwarded to wrap who, and then, and then the original symbol is preserved as real who. So this option is very cheap. It needs only a few hash table function, a uh, hash table lookup for each wrapped symbol. Um, name field in defined symbol, uh, symbol body is not significant. It is used when inserting symbols into symbol table, but it's not guaranteed that they match the same. Um, so the new LOD supports the uh, link time optimization, or LTO. So when you do LTO, your input files are not regular object files, but instead LVM bit code files. <laughs> bit code files contain symbols as usual files, uh, bit code files contain symbols as usual object files do. So we resolve all symbols in the normal procedure. So once it's done, Many symbols in the symbol table would point to defined symbol from bit code files. 
So after that, we pass all bit code files to LLVM to compile it into one gigantic uh, object file in native format. And they replace pointers pointing to bit code symbols to symbols from the object file. So it can be, uh, so that, so that it, it can continue linking as if bit code files were in the native file format from beginning. So um, this is the final slide. So we have been working on the uh, new uh, Elf linker uh, less than a year. So there are still a lot of things to do. The most important thing is to fix all remaining issues and make it usable as a system linker. So FreeBSD project, for example, is very interested in replacing their linker with LFD because of their license preference and because they are using very old version of GNU linker. So I expect that they'll uh, be the uh, first large open source operating system to use LFD as a system linker. So we are making efforts to for that transition to happen. So I believe that there is large room to improve performance further. We haven't actually done any serious performance optimization yet, although it's quite, quite fast. We just wrote it and it happened to be fast. So we wanna provide the linker and optimize bottlenecks. It is also mostly single threaded yet, so using thread may uh, improve the performance further. Um, currently, it, we are focusing on x86 platform, but so we need to support uh, other platforms as well. So, uh, so we are developing a high performance linker that is small and fast, and I believe that uh, that's very promising. So I would expect that I, it will become usable for daily development in, uh, in this year, hopefully. So stay tuned. Thanks. Yeah, I, I can't emphasize this bit about FreeBSD being enthusiastic and excited about this Thank you. enough, we are. Um, actually, there is one feature that we're still missing for linking the user space components and having them actually be useful, uh, which is symbol versioning support. What? Uh, support S for symbol versioning. Simple what? Versioning. Symbol, not symbol. Symbol. A symbol. Oh, symbol versioning. Yeah. Oh, I see. Um, yeah. So I wondered what the status of that was and if you know how the design will get because I think two or three years ago, the MC Linker guys were really enthusiastic and they were in almost the same state. They could link all of World on i386 except for symbol versioning and then they realized that adding symbol versioning support would require them to completely redesign everything that they were doing. So, uh, so in the new linker, uh, we don't, uh, uh, so I, the design is in my head how to support the uh, ver simple versioning and it doesn't need any significant redesigning. So I, I think this is a matter of just time. So I just happen to work on other stuff, but it's on the to-do list and there's nothing significantly harder compared to other items on the to-do list. Well, symbol versioning, so speaking of symbol versioning, it's a complicated feature. So it's invented by Sun, I think, to uh, identify uh, library uh, versions. But GNU extended the feature so that the same name can be resolved to different version of symbols, which is, I think they shouldn't have added that feature, but it's there. So that's a little bit complicated feature, but well, we can we can deal with that. It's really good to know. Thank you. Hello, hello. Oh. Um, with the performance numbers that you showed comparing LLD to Gold, have you done any analysis on the linked output um, to check that they're actually comparable? In the sense of, are they doing the same amount of things? So. 
the LLD linker could be twice as fast, but is it, for, ex for example, stripping uh, the dead EH frame um, descriptors? Uh, that gold does by default when linking. And more importantly, the, the thing that I've, from my experience, is the debug strings. Are you merging the debug strings and fixing up the relocations to those? Because that's what takes up most of the link time um, yeah. when linking debug information. So we are handling merge, mergeable sections as well as um, debug, debug info. So I think there's n nothing missing there. So at least compiled a linked program works. Right. So in that sense, it, it's tested, but no one has actually taken a look at every piece of the uh, linked yeah. program so far. So, okay. I, so I think yeah, there's... I was thinking like the dynamic metadata for the loader, all the stuff that Link has to generate, all of the, thing, the, the work that it does, is it at a state where it is comparable to gold at this point? It can. Okay. Um, the other thing they had, the support more platforms, the immediate thing that f came to mind was that x86, because variable length instructions is actually the easiest of them all to link because the relocations that you fix up are going to fit. When you start looking at fixed, le fixed length um, instruction architectures like ARM, PowerPC, um, you can't just go through the relocations once when you lay out stuff. You're going to have to add some support for them to provide trampolines because some of your jumps aren't going to reach. Sure, yeah. Um, and then that's when you have to process relocations many times and relay out all over again. And that is often a, a bottleneck in link time performance, which we don't have with what you've currently got. But. So there is a, a patch in review which adds some. Um, which handles some special type of MIPS relocations. So you, as you know that, usually in risk um, process, on risk processor, there are short jump and long jump. And so the offset is limited. So if the linker finds that the relocation cannot be satisfied within that space, then the linker creates a sunk to jump to that sunk and jump to the actual function. So we have to create, uh, the linker have to create thanks. And there is a pending patch to, to do, do that. So I, I think that's not fundamentally hard. Okay, thank you. What's the final size of the binaries? Are they much larger? I don't know. Uh, so I, I, I don't know about the size of the tank because we are currently focusing on x86 which doesn't need any sync creation. No, no, not the things, the support the... Oh, generated? Speed, because the speed, oh, the speed might mean that... The the, that's the same. Is the same? Yeah. Okay. Well, well <laughs> for, for that benchmark, the result size is almost the same. There are, there are some small um, variations, but that may come from some layered difference or something. And so if, if you were merging the debug strings or something, yeah. Yeah. If we miss, for example, debug info, then the result would be very small, and that's uh, intuitively faster. But that's not happening. Uh, yeah. So you mentioned that uh, the semantics of archives on the command line are now different in LLD. I'm just worried that um, so someone takes their code and it links with LLD, and then they try it with Gold, maybe on another platform or something and that will not work. So is it definitely necessary to have two different semantics for the linker command line? Uh, well, at least you can use the same command line as before with LLD if the command line, two command lines are compatible. So uh, as you said, because our simple resolution algorithm is different from the traditional linker, there is a sense that the command line that works with LLD doesn't work with the old linker because we, we actually don't care about the order of the files uh, regarding archive files. So that can happen, but um, that's, I, I don't think that's, a, that's, a signif that's significant enough to completely invent new command line format. Well, I'm just wondering, you, you could, it might be the case that it's not efficient to implement the semantics 
the old way, so you had to come up with new semantics. But it seemed like what you were talking about was a new algorithm, and what you've ended up with is a new semantics, and I don't know why that's necessary, but maybe we can talk about that later.